Hey what's up everybody, Trophinet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with. As you all surely know, the Crimson Curse expansion to the game is great. It adds over 100 new cards, a new leader for every faction and a slew of new mechanics to keep in mind. Instead of just talking about the new leaders, I wanted to talk about some cool new deck ideas combining a lot of the new cards with a new leader in every episode. Most of them will be viable in both seasonal and ranked play, but all of them have a certain fun factor to them. I always try to put an overall theme on each deck I compose, and today's deck is no exception. Today we'll talk about the Sacrifice Skellige deck, under the leadership of the horrific Svalblood. I gotta admit, I have a bit of a soft spot for Skellige. The faction was originally introduced way back in the Blood and Wine expansion to The Witcher 3, where they were considered a joke faction by a lot of the in-game characters. Fast forward to today's version of Gwent and Skellige is a full-blown and dare I say fan-favorite faction filled with their own Islander tactics and unique playstyles featuring contradictory themes such as death and rebirth and self-harm and healing. The self-harm angle however was sorely missing when Gwent came out of beta. CD Projekt Red felt some of the loops you could create were too powerful. Does everyone still remember combining raid swords with the longships, by the way? So they decided to cut the strategy out of the game entirely. This left a bit of a hole, a bit of an emptiness in the Skellige faction, limiting their options to either full-blown damage or a discard-heavy control deck. But Crimson Curse changed this with the addition of Svalblood and his army of cursed werebears, which are featured heavily in today's deck. Let's first talk about Svalblood himself. He has a peculiar leading ability. One of the only leading abilities that is completely useless without the units to benefit from it. Svalblood can damage one of your own units by one and can do this five times. Yes, you heard me correctly, one of your own units. When all his charges are depleted, he spawns a five power bear abomination on your side of the field, leaving his total point worth to zero. That's right, without synergy, Svalblood does absolutely nothing on his own. On the contrary, he might even lose you points. Which is actually, now that I think about it, quite fitting for a cursed warrior bear monstrosity. But that is where this deck comes in. As I said, each of my decks has an overarching team, and the Sacrifice deck is all about taking advantage of self-harm and healing damaged units back to full power. See, Crimson Curse re-adds a Skellige-specific mechanic, Berserk. Berserk is an ability that triggers once the unit in question drops to half power or below, and their effects range from improving their original ability to transforming the unit entirely. Berserk changes how your opponent needs to handle your units as well. Just damaging them is not enough, it just makes those units stronger. It forces your opponent to waste high power attacks to kill certain units in one go to avoid triggering Berserk abilities. Let's take a closer look at a few of these Berserkers. Let's start with the simplest one, the Svalblood Fanatic, and use him as an example. He's a 4 power unit that transforms into a 5 power abomination when it drops below half health. This makes it a simple defensive card, capable of taking up to 3 damage while even gaining a point in the process. You can use the Svalblood Totem card to spawn two of them immediately as well, making for a sturdy wall of bear monsters. Svalblood Totem itself also allows you to damage allied units next to it by two whenever you want, but only once. Triggering any Berserk abilities manually, which can often be very handy. Sigvald is a pretty standard damage engine, allowing you to damage any unit by one each turn, which is boosted to two damage on Berserk. He's basically a superpowered Pathco Gale. As long as Sigvald is alive, he can be an extremely handy tool to deal with anything your opponent plays or to push your Berserk units over the edge. Last but not least is Vildkarl, an extremely powerful version of the Fnatic. He starts at 5 power, meaning he needs to receive at least 3 damage to Berserk, but when he does, he transforms into a 12 power champion of Svalblood. This champion bear also has a separate ability, allowing you to heal him fully in exchange for destroying one of your other units. This synergizes extremely well with the most tactical card in the deck, the Heim. The Heim allows you to swap the power of any damaged unit with its own one power. This changed from his original version that only allowed you to swap with allied damaged units. You can use this to basically steal points from your opponent if you damage the high power enemy unit, doubling up on any swap you do. So for example, if you swap with a now damaged 5 power enemy unit, 
you gain 4 points and your opponent loses 4 points, netting you 8 points in total, plus the 1 for the base power of the Heim. Already pretty great, but that is usually not its best to use. If you have the champion of Svalblood on the field, you can damage him once with Svalblood himself and then swap power with the Heim, turning it into an 11 power unit. If you then heal up the champion by destroying a low power unit, you mitigate your loss immediately. A similar setup is combining Heim with Olaf. Olaf can boost himself by twice the amount he has damaged. So damage him once with Svalblood, swap him with the Heim, turning it into a 7 power unit, and then trigger Olaf's ability and it boosts up to 15 power for a combined total of 22 points for both of the cards. This allows you to use Heim effectively even when your opponent does not play units with a high base power to steal from. A card with a lot of possibilities. Since we're inflicting so much hurt on ourselves, we also add some healers to fix ourselves up. Aside from our basic bronze healers, we also have the Hey May Flaminica and Joanna to talk about. The Flaminica heals all other units on a row by one on the end of each turn. Extremely useful to keep some of our engine loops alive. More on that in a second. Joanna, on the other hand, can heal a unit by two and gains a charge to do this again every time an adjacent ally gets damaged which can ramp up rather quickly on both your turn and your opponents, depending on the setup. Joanna is great to keep certain units alive that benefit from getting damaged, which brings us to our other damage engines. Light longships can damage an enemy by one each turn, but damage themselves by one as well when they do. The Svalblood Priest damages a unit on the right by one at the end of each of your turns and boosts himself by two in return. Setting them on the same row as the Flaminica doubles up on their point potential while keeping the loop going indefinitely. So especially for the Priest, that means instead of the one point he gains each turn, you actually gain three points instead, because you heal off the one damage you received. The last enjoyer of pain is Blue Boy Lugos, who damages a random enemy by two each time he is damaged himself. This can result in board clearing damage if played correctly in combination with a healer and for example a priest to continuously damage him. If you really need something cleared out however, you can also squeeze up to 8 damage out of him directly with fall blood right when you play him. Remember to only do this in emergencies however because you will likely lose him immediately in the next turn. All of these cards combined can create some unstoppable engine loops that are completely self-sustaining if left alone by your opponent, especially in combination with the priests. Finally, we spice up the decks with some other gold cards. Artis is also new in Crimson Curse and damages every unit played by half their power, rounded up. This annoys the hell out of your opponent, while you immediately trigger the Berserk ability of any unit you play. However, he needs to be played on the ranged row, so he can be countered by moving as well as locks and straight up damage. But still, a fun card nonetheless. Not the Callus damages the allied unit to his right by half its power, again rounded up, when you play him and allows you to damage an enemy by that same amount. Another great way of triggering Berserk while dealing extra damage, paired with his 6 power, uh, makes him a very great card. I also added Geralt Erden to have a match ending resetter available, either to heal up my damaged units or reset boosted enemies. Yennefer of Vengerberg I've added as well, and she can trigger multiple Berserk abilities at once when she damages all other units by two. If you have any healers, you can even heal off any remaining damage as well, allowing for match changing effects that benefit mostly you. Both Geralt and Yennefer can be swapped out for similar cards, or removed for lower provision cost units to reduce the amount of 4 power units in this deck. But I like the options they provide, but feel free to experiment with the setup like that. That's basically it for the Sacrifice deck, but one more thing about Berserk. The sad thing about Berserk at the moment is that it doesn't trigger right away. Some Skellige cards can damage a unit and then boost it right after, but if a Berserk unit drops below half health like this, it doesn't trigger Berserk at all. Not before and definitely not after the boost. This regrettably holds the Sacrifice deck back a bit, because I could have added a lot more really cool combos that boost the point gain of those first damage then boost cards, such as Murderer, for example. I'm silently hoping that CG Project Red still quote unquote fixes this in the near future, but yeah, okay, I'm hoping out loud, but I mean, one can only dream, right? But that's basically it about Berserk and the Sacrifice deck in general. What do you guys think? Got any other tips on how to play the new cards added to the Skellige faction? Don't hesitate to leave advice in the comment section so we can help each other out, and I'm really looking forward to talking about this with you guys. 
I have a lot of new deck ideas still, so expect more of this type of videos in the near future. Check me out on Twitter under the handle at TrophyNet if you want to talk. And if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Any support is really appreciated. So thanks to Normandy for watching and hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwentage. Happy playing, goodbye.